So, I like modded faction servers, and I'm pretty good at them too. Unfortunately, for the past few years, modded faction servers have been completely dead. Luckily, the year is 2019, Minecraft is back, and modded faction servers exist again. So, I figured it might be fun to find one and see if my modded faction server skills are still up to scratch. Turns out, they are. And so I present... It's important to find the right server. That'll do. So you'll realize that modded faction servers are filled with the most hardcore, crude, evil, cunning, warriors. Jeez, Bobby. Sup. You wanna form a faction? I will not hesitate to stab you in the back and take everything you own. So of course, XD. XD. Okay. There. Faction Cashman has sent you an invite. Never mind, people are still dumb as fuck. And so, there was only one way to begin this journey. Logging off and waiting for the guy to gather some resources for me. So, the guy didn't actually gather much, but hey, 64 oak planks, that, that's, gonna, that's gonna set us for life. We got this, this server's screwed already. This wood will allow us to build the most amazing base anyone has ever seen. Okay, so here's the big brain move. Most people on faction servers build up crazy bases with the toughest material that they can find to ensure that they can outlast any bomb dropped on them. Our plan? Make a new base, which looks like it's been raided already, and have our actual base be underneath it. This literally cannot go wrong. So now that we have a base, we need resources, and fast, because I want to become god as soon as possible, quite frankly. Okay, so this bit is boring, so I'll try and cover it as quickly as possible. The standard mod factions player wastes his time by gathering materials and using machinery or a smeltery to get two times ore production. Now what if I told you you could get around three to four times ore production without using a single machine instantly? You'd call me a madman, but I'd just point out that tinker tools are in this mod pack. And with all these different ingots, there is definitely going to be some winning formula for a godly hammer we can use to gather resources crazy fast. But wait, Kuba, that's my name by the way, we need resources to make a hammer. You have nothing but a bunch of dirt, stone, and wood to your name. Wrong, Buster. We are on a modded faction server, which means we have access to the slash vote. <gasps> that means we can get a bunch of resources and rewards and money to buy all the things we need, literally free of cost. And so, it's now just a matter of finding out which resources are the best for our needs. Typically, a player would tell you that to make a good hammer, you should be using cobalt and manuli... 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 The purple stuff. And this is good if you're living in 2014. But in the modern age, we have access to a lot more ingots with fancy effects and crazy statistics. So, I read the materials in book. Yes, all of it. And to save you the trouble... The materials that you should be using are cobalt, firewood, and the most overpowered material in this known universe, solarium. But Kuba, solarium is just some BTEC material from Ender.io. Oh really? Is that why its durability bonus is fucking 1,500, which is literally six times the durability of the purple stuff, and all you need to craft it is slam some gold and soul sand together, and poof, you have a goddamn miracle ingot that gives more defense capabilities than a Greek deity. Anyway, once you have all this, simply make a cobalt head, solarium handle, and plate and top it off with a firewood plate. Then, simply pepper on some lapis and redstone, and boom, your godly tool is complete. But Cooper, I don't see how this is so impressive. It's just a hammer with fortune. Well, yeah, it is, but guess what? Firewood gives you an odor smelt modifier, which includes the fortune enchantment, meaning this thing smelts and dupes ores upon mining. All of a sudden, these free iron ores produce 10 ingots, which is over three times the amount. Try get your little pulverizer and redstone furnace to do that. So now that we had our hammer, we could mine with ease. 10 minutes. L literally took us 10 minutes, and we had all these resources. We're not like rich rich, but this is basically top 10% already. So now we needed somewhere to store all our resources and craft things with ease. So heck, let's make an ME system. This took a lot longer than I expected, because I forgot that every meteor from spawn to the moon has already been gutted by other players, and so we'd have to trade to get the inscriber presses that we needed. And all people seemed to need was either gas tears or eulorium. Wait. Eulorium? AKA an ore? An ore that we can mine? Well, this was freaking easy!
Anyway, now that we had an ME system, a big reactor to power it, oh yeah, big reactors are a thing, just sort of use them, they're really OP, we can log off and take over the world tomorrow. So, things didn't really go according to plan, our base got raided. Who could have seen this coming? Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Thomas Edison, inventor of light bulbs. And so we persisted with our journey, and with it, I decided to really show off my abilities in modded factions. So I took over the end portal. The server discord had discussed the use of tier 5 reinforced walls, which are indestructible to nukes. However, there were two major flaws with this strategy. A. The block recipe is stupid and needs various different resources. And B. Not actually indestructible. Trust me, I've, I've tested it. They are very, very, very breakable. But, fun fact, loading up a creative world and unleashing a barrage of nuclear bombs on various different blocks reveals which blocks are in fact indestructible, and so we have chosen Compressed Obsidian as our block of choice. Okay, between you and me, there is a way to break every single block in this mod pack except one, but since the community accepted that tier 5 blocks are indestructible, I didn't really have faith in their abilities to figure out how to actually break my block of choice. But why Compressed Obsidian, Kuba? Because it's cheap and easy to craft. But where are you going to get all the subsidian you need? Have you not been listening this whole time? We own the end portal! Oh, by the way, vein miner is a thing. And so, we have our new indestructible base complete. Time to become a god. Fun fact, I've never actually used the armor plus mod before, but I'm just kind of assuming that the ultimate set is the best armor in the game, mainly because we have all these rich players running around in ender dragon armor, complaining about how expensive ultimate armor is, so I'm gonna assume that it's a good armor to flex my god status on. This is where I almost made a mistake. See, everybody on the server was using woot systems to do mob grinding. The server had gone to many lengths to ensure this by banning Ender.io power spawners with a message saying, use woot for mob spawning. Issue was, woot was expensive, took a lot of time to set up, and required you to kill five of whatever mob you wanted to grind. Yet, with the steps the server owner had taken to ensure woot was used, there was little hope for an easy way out. Then I realized something. There was a mod in this mod pack that I had previously searched for but not found. However, what I didn't expect was that the mod was in the mod pack, but under a different name from when I used it back in 2015. Mine Factory Reloaded had been adapted into Industrial Foregoing, with every item from the old mod having a different name in the new mod, which is probably why nobody on the server ever considered this mod when making mob spawners. And so, my conquest could continue using the Odo Spawner, which has now been renamed to the Mob Duplicator. This allowed me to use Essence experience and small amounts of power to produce mobs that I capture in the Mob Imprisonment tool. Yes, finally, a victory! My Minecraft mod knowledge has been useful and I can become a god! Okay, maybe there was a tiny problem. Remember how people were only willing to trade for Eulorium or Gas Tears? Well, yeah, gas tiers were incredibly rare on the server because the mob rates in the Never were broken. I'd been told some people have spent around two days in the Never and only been able to find one ghast. This was a problem. To save my sanity, I traded with somebody for a single gas tier, which allowed me to make a mob imprisonment tool. This meant I could capture the first gas I saw and duplicate it infinitely. And so I flew. And I flew. And I flew. For four hours. Trying to find a ghast. It was starting to look hopeless until... I spotted one! Oh my god! Finally I was ready to sell my soul to Satan for this! Jesus Christ! And so, we now had a mob duplicator set up, producing ghast tears like no tomorrow. But Cooper, you said that you needed essence to produce mobs. How are you getting so much experience? I made a platform out in the end void and AFK'd there with a crusher. I was just going in and out of range of a minecart. Sometimes it's the simple solutions that work best, guys. See, at this point I felt a little bit bad, because everybody else on the server was struggling to get ghasts. Even people who had been playing for months at this point were stuck at a barrier, complaining in chat how they needed to kill more ghasts to make their woot system work. And well, one of those people was Chappers, the man who saved me hours of time by giving me that single gas tier. And so I decided to give back to the community a little, and gifted Chappers some ghasts. So... Long story short, I like to think I'm pretty good at factions, and so I decided, oh, there's a modded faction server. I haven't done one of those in years, so let's log on and do a modded faction server. So this started about a week or two ago. I've only played, like, a day total. And, um, 
yeah, it's it's proven to me that I am pretty decent at this game, and I, if you want, I can give you like literally an infinite supply of ghasts right now. <laughs> and now, as proof that uh, all of this that I've stated isn't bullshit, blah 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 blah. <laughs> There's a uh, eight morphs for uh, ghasts. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Just don't tell anyone else for now. <laughs> uh. Now back to world domination. The ultimate armor was made up from three separate sets of armor: Ender Dragon, Wither, and Guardian. And since we had a crazy OP mob system, all we need to do was capture these mobs. First, I grabbed the Ender Zombie. Easy enough. The Elder Guardian was also simple to get. But the Wither Skeleton I could only get in the Never, which meant I had to spend another two hours flying around just to find one. Finally! However, there was a catch with the Wither Skeleton. All the other mobs dropped everything we needed for the armor sets. Ender Dragon Scales got them. Guardian Scales? Easy. However, the Wither set needed Never Stars, which meant we needed to make a Wither Farm. Fun fact, this was actually really easy. Make a Wither Cage, use a Wither Builder, and use the crusher we already use to grind all of our captured mobs. And so, we now had a crazy overpowered armor material system, which allowed us to make the ultimate armor in no time. Finally, we made it to the end game. We could produce endless amounts of ultimate material, without trying. Any mob could be captured and duplicated at will, a digital miner combined with our hammer made resource gathering effortless, yet nobody knew that I had become the most powerful person on the server. Everything was done secretly, so nobody could realize how I rose to power so quickly. It was then that I realized how I would ascend to true godhood. I started giving out Ender Dragon sets to everybody who logged into the server. Now, you see, I could have given everybody ultimate armor sets, however, they took way too long to craft, so I just went with the Ender Dragon armor instead. This plan actually worked crazy well. The Discord the day I was giving out the armor was wild. This boy is a great guy. Definitely the best on the server. Not a great guy. He is a god. Cheese boy is god. Cheese Bobby is a god. Cheese Bobby, you're a god and a cutie. Thanks, man. I'm a god. Grr. Cheese Bobby is a fucking god. Cheese Bobby is my god. Ah, I see he came back around. Well, shit, there goes the server balance. Cheese Bobby is the one god. Cheese Bobby is the only lord and savior. All hail Cheese Bobby. That Cheese Bobby is my god and savior. Thank him, praise him, he is God himself. Cheese Bobby is God. Cheese Bobby has come to free us from sin and sadness. Even after that day, I'd be worshipped and spoken about. And so, the only logical step after this to finish up this conquest was taking over an entire dimension. And so, I chose the end. See, at this point, we already controlled one of the end portals, but since our faction claims couldn't actually be disconnected from one another, I couldn't claim all the different portals. So instead, I might have set up laser turrets which would kill everybody on site who would enter the dimension almost instantly. Well, I've, I've literally become a god. I, I'd, I'd start logging onto the server and I'd be referred to as god. Truly, I have completed my goal and... Yeah, I think this is a good place to leave the server.